Yeah, this is the 32nd ever podcast episode of the Ice Coffee Hour. I'm Gary, otherwise known as King Pokemon. So far, the podcast has made $25,814. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. Amazing. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So much. My so pleasure. <laughs> we came all the way to Las Vegas today to meet with you. Yes. And this is a really special episode because, first of all, I would say, first of all, would you say you have the largest Pokemon collection? In existence, in well, terms of value, uh, not only do I believe that, but I know that as a fact. And I have a lot of items, Pokemon items, in my collection that aren't even known to everybody. That I have tucked away in Northern California in a storage locker. Some people know some of the items, but uh, yeah, that's a safe assumption. How much would you wow. say the whole collection is worth? Let's hook people from the very beginning. This is the reason why you got to watch this episode. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never been able to answer that question accurately. Uh, I can tell you that what I brought to show you, you know, uh, I'll give you the value of that. But of all the things that, that we have in storage, yeah. I have no idea what the value is. Plus, Pokemon has been spiking, shooting up so high that the numbers are changing weekly. I, I mean, it's... Uh, Multi-millions, absolutely, but I really yeah. can't be more accurate. I'd, you, I'd love yeah. to tell you, maybe do you uh, think someday. It's, do you think it's more than $10 million? It, I, I, it has to be. Yeah, I would say that's safe to say also, <laughs> yes. Uh huh. You'll, you'll see what we have, what we brought, you know, just to show you today. Wow. <laughs> So, um, oh, by the way, if you wouldn't mind putting the mic a little bit closer, I just uh -huh. want to make sure. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I want to know, first of all, how you even got involved to begin with. When did you first discover Pokemon? I remember in 1997 or 1998, uh, in that area, I remember a news article that came out that talked about a cartoon episode in Japan that was causing a lot of kids to uh, go into tremors and hallucinations and things like that. I remember that, the seizures. The seizures. I remember that. Yes. That was a flashing episode. Yes. And yeah. at the time, I had my two uh, youngest sons were seven and eight years old. And so I identified with, you know, what was happening to those kids. But when I heard that, I remember my first thought was, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was serious, yeah. right? But I thought... I thought, man, this this made the international news, you know, of a cartoon. And so I investigated, what's this cartoon? What's this all about? Pokemon uh, in in Japan. Of course, it was Pocket Monsters. It wasn't known as Pokemon. And and so after, you know, that, that was my first exposure. Then I got interested. And then I got involved in a little bit of a business venture on bringing Japan, there, there was no English cards, mm -hmm. bringing Japanese cards over for our shop at home network and uh, selling them, getting them graded and uh, sold on shop at home, uh, which they're somewhere on the internet. There's episodes of that, which you can see. And uh, so that they always sold right out because Pokemon was, um, you know, it, it was such an unprecedented thing in Asia that it was, I knew it was a can't miss situation in the United States because there had never been anything like it, even in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is a good indication of things that will transfer over. So when it got over here and then Wizards of the Coast ended up having, uh, you know, getting the license to do the English version of Pokemon, uh, I was as involved as I could be. Had a lot of doors shut in my face, but I wanted to get in because I knew this was a, a great investment idea, which was uh, my whole intention back then was as an investment. Then my boys got interested in it. And then my neighbor's boys. And then suddenly I was driving out of state to try to find Pokemon cards for my family. And, and so, uh, and we'd open the packs and then I ended up with so many and we started selling on something that was Yahoo auctions. Uh, which we don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a Yahoo Japan, but not Yahoo uh, USA. And so we had got so many, we started selling them and collecting them. But I've always been a horrible seller. Uh, I've always had trouble letting things go. I become so attached, you know, to things. And, and so I saved them. And obviously, 
was that, smart. that was a smart move to this day, you know, that, that I did do that. So that was really the beginnings. Yeah. What were you doing for work? You said home shopping network. So how were you making your money back then? Yeah. Uh, well, I've been in the uh, casino management uh, business for many years and, uh, you know, ran the Sahara hotel and, uh, you know, different, different things like that. And, and so I, at that period of time when Pokemon was coming over, I got sick. I got a type of cancer that had to be treated mm. and it didn't work. No, it worked. I'm here today. Right. <laughs> so, so we ended up, uh, I ended up, you know, with free time, you know, kind of like, you know, a lot of people now during this COVID thing, mm. what they're doing, you know, they're finding time to do other stuff. And so I had time to mess with the hobby with Pokemon. And so that's what, that's what I did. That's incredible. So, um, were you collecting yeah. other cards before you started collecting Pokemon? Cards? Yes, I have. I'm a lifelong collector, going all the way back to the 1950s. I think in 1959, I was five years old, and I remember saving bottle caps with uh, professional football players' faces on the inside of the bottle caps, mm. and collecting all the Los Angeles Rams, you know, which is where where I lived and yeah. who my team was, and I, I collected trading cards, baseball cards. Baseball uh, cards? Oh, absolutely. I still have a, a decent collection, not a super valuable one. I don't have any uh, mantle rookies or you know oh, anything I mean, like that's, that. That's that's huge. Right, but I do have um, Sandy Koufax, you know, rookies and Don Drysdale rookies <laughs> uh, because they were my favorites yeah. in that. But then I didn't keep them in the greatest condition. I was just a little kid, you know, of course. So uh, I collected trading cards, the shows from the 1960s, like mm -hmm. Adam's Family and Munsters. I collected all those trading cards, those sets. Uh, I, I like to say that I don't think there's a single set that I either don't own today or didn't own at one time complete. Wow. So yeah, good question. And absolutely, I've collected my entire life, not just those things, but science fiction magazines from the 1920s, uh, pulp magazines. Uh, I mean, just so many things. But this is where I think is really interesting because once you start getting into what I like to call alternative investments, mm -hmm. Pokemon cards, we could, we could say maybe is one of them, movie posters, let's just say, like some of these other things, including artwork, are just really unique to start to collect. Yes, Yo, they, they absolutely are in their... Uh, I was at a little bit of a disadvantage early on because my mom and dad and fa family members, nobody were co was collectors. They were all, if there was something too much in the house, get it, get it out. You know, they wanted to keep things neat. And uh, so there was no, there was no interest in collecting. So yeah. I really have a feeling it's a kind of an inherent thing because from the very beginning, I was a collector and loved, you know, loved, you know, the, just the whole thing, going to shows, the search, the completing sets, yep. the, it all meant, you know, so much inherently to me naturally. And so uh, I, I, you know, it's, you know, kind of an individual special thing. And I have it to this day, yeah. even with all I've been through, all the things I have. Uh, I mean, I still have my eye forward, you know, looking for, you know, other things and, and, and excited to see other people get things and yep. like what you're going to do later on. I'm actually excited to see you do that, to open that. And I'd I mean, say, yeah. just, just because that that's, it's in me, you know, to, you know, to be excited about such things and to enjoy it. And yeah. So let me share this. So we got, uh, well, I got a first edition gym trainers pack unopened. What was that year? Is that 1999, I believe, right? Was it gym trainers or was it 2000? Yeah, it was, it was actually 2000. 2000. And it's uh, gym heroes. Gym heroes. Yes. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. So unopened, I got this pack and I've been waiting specifically for today to open it. Right. So well, I, I, I am so excited to see you open this because because uh, there, there can be some real treasures in there. And every single, you know, it's more of a nostalgia thing. Yep. You know, 20 years ago when you were, you know, when you were just a little kid, yeah. and go to the store and pay your three bucks for a pack and go out back and open them. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yep. And that, that's what you're going to relive right this moment. Yeah. And and I think that's part of the attraction to Pokemon. Yeah. You know, it's, it's going back and it's reliving those memories. And, See, I agree with that. And yeah. uh, what you were saying reminds me a lot of myself because... Mm -hmm. 
when I was getting into Pokemon, I never played the game, but I mm -hmm. only collected the cards. Right. And I kept them in all pristine condition. Mm. And uh, I got the entire, I think I got nearly the entire base set. I I don't remember how much was first edition or how much was just base. Right. I can't remember, but someone stole my entire mm. binder of cards, a few hundred cards oh boy. when I was off at school. I put them in my backpack, but I would go and bring them to school to trade oh, with, with other kids and just, right. I'd bring them and like show them off. Be like, yes. look what I got last night. And uh, I remember I would even trade with the, um, uh, with, with the store I would go into and they had a big display of cards and I'd come in with my cards like, can I trade three of these that I had duplicates of? Can I trade these for that one that you have there? Uh. Someone stole it, but that unfortunately really ruined it for me. Because I was so it's disappointed, hard to start over. I was like, "How can I? How yeah. can I recreate that?" I couldn't. So I got into the Neo set because mm. I didn't even want to go back because I like, it was so damaging to me because I think I was maybe ten or eleven. It's traumatic. Yeah, it, it was. Is. Yes, because I had never had mm. anything stolen from me ever mm -hmm. in my entire. So this is the first wake up call. Like, who would steal from me? Like, right. who, who would do this? Yeah. So I got into Neo. Got into Magic the Gathering a little mm -hmm. bit, but nothing was quite the same afterwards, right. for, unfortunately. But. You, you know, I hear I, I hear that story quite a bit. Uh, even today, yeah. for people just getting back into the hobby today, if they buy a box and it turns out it's a reseal or something, and, you know, it, it takes kind of takes the heart out of you. Yeah. You know, it makes you not want to, you know, you, you don't want to take a chance of having that happen to you again. And, and, I, and I tell everybody that talks to me about going through an experience like that is seriously try to brush it off because, mm -hmm. because there was so much value prior to that day yeah. that happened. Yeah. And that same value is still there at this moment. Get back into it, you know, yeah. do it and enjoy it and, uh, and re relive it. You know, those moments, they fade away over time. Yeah, mm -hmm. but... The I also, bad, yeah, bad times. yeah. I also want to mention. But first, we have a quick word from our sponsor, Simply Safe. There's almost always a rise in break-ins during the holidays, and that's exactly why Simply Safe is having a huge holiday sale. U.S. News and World Report called it the best security system in 2020. So whether you all are staying put or you're traveling for the holidays, I strongly encourage you guys to check out Simply Safe. And guys, Simply Safe is great because you can actually set it up in about 30 minutes. And usually with home security systems, it can take hours to set them up. Simply Safe is just 30 minutes, and after that, they'll have your back 24/7 and call the cops if anything happens. So protect yourself in 30 minutes and get one free camera when you visit simplysafe.com slash iced coffee. And hurry because this deal expires Friday. It's simplysafe.com slash iced coffee. Once again, everything will be down in the description, simplysafe.com slash iced coffee. Thank you so much and back to the podcast. My first introduction to you was mm -hmm. through Pawn Stars. I oh, remember okay. I remember your episode specifically. That yes. must have been was that like 13, 12 years ago? Was yeah, that ago? that was uh no, 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 that wasn't that long really? ago. It was actually uh, the early part of 2016. No, was yeah, it? Yeah. Why do I feel like it was I know. I saw that. I saw yeah. that episode as well. And that yeah, doesn't, doesn't like it feel like Pawn Stars well, was way longer ago? No. no you no. see, uh, Pokemon Go came out in uh, January, I think January of 2016. And, uh, and that, that kind of Drove put a prices. needle in the arm yeah. of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I started getting, see, I, I was, you know, kind of known as King Pokemon for many years before that. I did many things and was a top, you know, a top eBayer and uh, uh, did, did a lot of things prior to that. But the Pawn Stars episode, which was in 2016, just after the Pokemon Go mm -hmm. uh, craze, uh, which lifted it the pawn stars episode just lifted it yeah. out of sight so, i mean it brought the hobby yeah. back let's talk about mm -hmm. that episode for yes, a second because i didn't sure. fully explain it when i remember watching your episode you went into pawn stars and you were talking to rick was it rick yes about selling your charizards and you wanted five hundred thousand dollars yes for the how many charizards was that okay uh do you want the whole story? Yes. yes, please. How do they reach out to you? How yes. much? How much? Can you say how much of that is like scripted? One hundred percent. I will tell you yeah. the exact honest story about this. Tell us. Okay. They did reach out to me in advance. Okay. Uh, Rick lives here in town. He's yep. a neighbor of ours too. Wow. And, uh, is he really? Yeah. That would and, be crazy uh, to meet Rick. Yeah, and and wow. he has some connection to Pokemon. Not just really? this episode we did together, yeah. but he has some other connections. You know, through Chumley in that you know from the show yeah. anyway uh they uh his his producer did reach out to me and ask me uh 
because Pokemon Go had lit such a fire under the hobby, they wanted to get a Pokemon epi- a segment on one of their episodes. And so they reached out to me and and they had seen one of my listings that had those Charizards and it was over a hundred PSA 10s, different types, oh. right? But all Charizards and all, you know, trading TCG. And then there was maybe 20 or 25 Beckett's cards. So there's about 100, 120 cards. And so they wanted me to bring those in and negotiate with Rick. They said, would I be interested in selling? And all I'm thinking about is, what is this going to do for the hobby? How big would this be? It's always been my focus is to, there's more stories about the past having to do with this, but it's always been about lifting the hobby, even those recent things with Logan and and that. Uh, And so... You know, right away, I said, oh, certainly, you know, I'll do that. And, oh, yeah, I'll sell. Now, market for all those at the time might have been in the $400,000 range, Mm -hmm. uh, at least as well as I could, you know, figure it. A lot of mine were one of a kind, so it's a little hard to calculate those because there's no, you know, well, comps, which you would understand in that. So uh, I ended up uh, asking for $500,000 with, no intention of selling. But if they offered yeah, five, would you, you would have sold. Great question. I would have been so obligated to sell. Yeah. Now, that would have been top retail at the time. Yeah, That would have been the, the most that I could, which is why I set that number, because anything under that I, I could easily not accept. Had they come to me and said, okay, we're going to give you the 500000 uh, which I didn't expect. Yeah. I I might have had to, but I also might have tried to find a way out. Did you have we, to sign a contract going into it saying if they if they paid you your price, your obli- like a, like a shark mm-hmm. tank? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I I did have to sign a contract, but it didn't deal with that. You know, just dealt with being able to use my likeness and yeah, sure. and, and that stuff. Uh and so and so when that when he finally said that, you know, he wasn't you know, he just didn't know what he would do with it. I mean, it's probably the biggest mistake Pawn Stars ever made. Something else, let me mention, you might not, you might know this, a lot of people don't. It's the second most viewed segment in the history of Pawn Stars. Yeah. They've had over 2,000 segments. The Pokemon episode, that Pokemon episode is the number two yeah. highest rated there's over 12 million already on uh, history YouTube. channel yeah. Yeah. well on history channel then they had tons at the time you What's know the top rated uh it's i feel like that was the car there's some car no, they, no? It, it's actually some coin th- something that didn't deserve it uh, yeah. <laughs> which we're catching we're catching up to it. it's like 15 million right. but we we it was 15 million to 10 million at yeah. one time on history channel and now we're 15 million to 13 million. So ours mm. is going, we might catch that. But no, it, it was nothing you know, special. It was like a coin or something like that. But uh, anyway, when he didn't do it, I was relieved because I knew we got the publicity for the hobby. And, uh, and yet I you know, didn't go through any type of embarrassment having to not accept his, uh, or yeah. later after the yeah. show telling him, Rick, I can't. Yeah. What percentage but, of your collection were those Charizards? Oh, okay. Well, that was my entire Charizard collection. Of course, I have a whole lot of collectibles mm-hmm. with with Pokemon. You'll see some. Uh, but, I mean, I, I, I was just, that whole thing just worked out so good because it just blew up after that episode. Yeah. It, just, it just absolutely blew up. And a lot of people got to know me for the first time. So it was you know, good for me. Not that I try to benefit in any way, you know, but I, it was good for me. That like his first time, first time you, yep. first time yep. you did, first yep. time a lot of people did. The best part of it was, it was the first time a lot of parents saw it and they have their kids playing with Pokemon and then they see me there with a <laughs> half a million dollar. They yeah. say, wait a second, it kind of legitimized, you know, the, the investment value right. of Pokemon and that. And they thought, well, heck, this guy has, you know, has this stuff. And, you know, anyway, it, it it did two things. It got parents more interested in their kids, you know, Pokemon hobbies. Plus, for for people who at that time were turning 25, 30 years old, it made them think, wait a second, where's my old Pokemon binder? And then they would go through the attic. They would mm-hmm. find their own their own binder, then get back involved, see, realize that, you know, well, this is super cool. You know, the, you know, the feeling's 
rush back and and so uh it it did those two things yeah. also which was great for the hobby yeah now let's mm-hmm. talk about the hobby now yes do you worry or feel like it's a bit bubblish in terms of prices? Do you feel like people are piling in because they just want the investment, they just want to make money? And do you think that's going to settle down? Yeah, I, I mean, that, there, there is no more pertinent question than that these days because uh, it's really hard to tell. All I can do is give an answer based on my past experience which I've uh, I have quite a bit with collectibles in that uh, there I have never seen anything comparable to Pokemon of all the collectibles that have come before in my lifetime I had never seen anything like the reaction Pokemon got in the original in 1999 in English mm-hmm. uh, all the way through the 2000s up until today. It's unprecedented. So it's really hard to say. I, uh, I do understand bubbles, and I have seen a hundred of them. I don't see it with Pokemon because I've always believed that 10 to 15 years after the last item is produced, that a hobby is safe. Pokemon is still pumping out sets like crazy, right? You know, there's so these little kids are growing up with Pokemon. Our little six year old has Pokemon everywhere, whether it's cards or little action figures or plushes. I mean, uh, it's, it's still there for these kids. And 20 years from now, that six year old is going to be 26. Mm -hmm. And that uh, 10 year old is going to be, you know, is going to be 20, 25, 30 years old. And, uh, and I, and I see the hobby as being safe for all those years. Once they stop producing Pokemon, uh, then I would I could safely say you know that maybe 10, 15 years you know you know, but then again maybe not. Maybe it would still keep going. Mm-hmm. So, so you think as long as Pokemon is still popular to younger people, the mm-hmm. hobby will at least these cards could continue going up in value. But once they stop maybe people might forget or not be as enthusiastic as they once were. Even more so, even more so now than in 1999, because remember in 1999, us parents didn't have any history with Pokemon, right? Because Pokemon was just being released in English. And so like for my two boys who were like seven, eight, nine at the time, uh, you know, I was simply involving myself with them because I, I wanted to be, you know, a part of what they were interested in. Uh, today, it's a different story. When you guys have kids, you guys ha- already know about Pokemon. You guys right. already enjoyed Pokemon. And it's, and it's not that big of a stretch for you to join in, in, the, in the, uh, the fun of it, you know, with your children. Uh, you actually identify with the whole thing. Back then, we didn't, because right. you know, we didn't have Pokemon before that. Uh, so, Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd say I'd say that that is uh, probably the biggest change is that now the parents know all about it. They they loved it at one time, and they're gonna they will easily participate with their kids. Did you ever get into any of the like Pokemon <clears throat> copycats, like any of the other collect collectibles? Like I know there's like Bakugan oh, you, Yu-Gi-Oh. and like Yu Gi Oh. I. Up until 2002 or 2003, I was just an incorrigible collector. I, I had to have every trading card set. I have all the Dragon Ball Z sets. I have all the Sailor Moon sets, uh, the Premier Edition. I just gave to Steve, as a matter of fact, the mm-hmm. Premier Edition. Uh, the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Magic the Gathering you know, from before Pokemon that came out, I think, 1993. Uh, yeah, yeah, I collected them all, and I have... Uh, the vast majority of them still to this day and love them. And Yu-Gi-Oh is taking off like crazy now too. Also another quick question. Yes. When you first got started in Pokemon, Mm -hmm. how much of it was you looking into a new investment opportunity and how much of it was just genuine curiosity of a new collectible just because you like collecting things? Because it seems like with as much excitement as there was with Pokemon Mm -hmm. and the fact that it was just starting at that time, you could probably properly gauge like its future values. Yeah, I I could at the time. I had never seen anything like uh, like fifty to a hundred people in line at a Walmart, you know, waiting for the next, you know, for the next for the jungle release or the fossil release of Pokemon. I had never seen that. 
I mean, that, that kind of, it, it was like every single day was Black Friday. You know, it, it was just crazy. Uh, so yes, I did, I did anticipate, I did anticipate uh, long-term investment, you know, opportunities with it. But I can't say that I was so smart that I, I uh, led my, my actions and my life in that direction because of the investment opportunities. I'd love to be able to say that because I would look a lot smarter, right? Yeah. But I, I can't take credit for that because I just simply loved hobbies, loved collecting, loved the connection to my sons. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I would have done it no, no matter you know what. Yeah. You know, no matter what the situation yeah. was. How much of your own money back then were you spending on cards? Like what yeah. percentage of your income were you making back then that you're like 20%, I'm going to buy Pokemon cards? Like yeah, uh, it, it, a great question because I didn't have all the money I had before and after because at that during that time period, I had gotten sick and couldn't work and, and it was cancer. It was a type of cancer. And, uh, and so it wasn't like I was pumped up, you know, where I could afford anything I wanted in that. It's just that it was of such interest to, to Jay and Devin, my two sons, that, uh, you know, every extra dollar that I could, I put into the hobby. And, uh, of course it wasn't any, you know, it wasn't that expensive back then. You could get base packs when they first came out for like three, four bucks. So that's first edition base? No, first, oh, first, first, ed edition? first edition uh, were always difficult to find. Really? Yeah, yeah, they were always difficult to find. In fact, I don't think I ever, ever, ever saw one on a shelf at any store. Really? And I was involved in January 1999, which is the very beginning. Why is that? They released them on the West Coast, uh, and then they ran out, so they never got across country. But I think the majority of the card, there were a lot of card shops. Card shops were super popular back then. Uh, they ended up, you know, getting them and then breaking them open, selling the singles. And, and again, people were driving out of state, including me, just to find them. That's how popular. So they had no trouble finding buyers for the singles. So they cracked most of that sealed product and then sold them through their stores. And the hobby stores had priority over the Walmarts and Targets and that yeah. back then, uh, who ended up getting the unlimited versions in that. Wow. So, How many unopened first edition boxes do you think there are still out there? Unopened first edition. Well, you know I have nine. You have you, nine? Do you know that? No, I didn't know oh, that. Oh, okay. I did not know that. I have a case. Uh, in the in the Pokemon wow. community, yeah. the people know that they've okay. seen pictures and all that. Uh, there's I have a, a case of six boxes where I have the half the lid opened up like this, just because I wanted to make sure what was inside uh, opened up. No boxes would fit. You couldn't take any of the boxes out, but I know what's inside. So that's a box of six. I have a How picture. Did you buy? How I have did you a find picture that? I can send you. Uh, I just got that through a, I think it was through Frank and Sons, uh, which is a collectible, uh, collect, a collectible, uh, I don't know what you call it, convention or something, but twice a week in Los Angeles uh, on what Wednesdays and Saturday. That was 1999. <laughs> and, wow. and they're still going today. The Frank and Sons wow. show is still going today in Los Angeles. And now they have a lot of Pokemon. Oh, I, I took my boys there every single Wednesday and Saturday. And so anyway, I got those six in the case. And then I got three odd boxes in that those early years. How'd you wow. acquire the other and how much boxes? Is that? How, much, how much was that? How much you paid back? Yeah, then? no. I mean, just crazy low amounts. You know, may, maybe... Four or five hundred a box, something like that. Four or five hundred a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four or five hundred for one box. So multiply that for the case of six. Wow. In that, I bet back then people were were thinking that was crazy, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. totally were. Yeah, you would go into like Frank and Sons, and on their shelf they would have one first edition base pack, like for fifty dollars, and it sat there for six months. Nobody would spend fifty bucks on it. Not that that exact same pack. You know, especially if it's a heavy is, you know, twenty, twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. So but I mean, so no, no, it wasn't that big of a deal. To me, it was kind of a big deal 
because I, I, I knew about first edition stuff. You see, I was, I was no kid, right? I knew about the value of limited edition items. And so, you know, whereas the, the kids that were into it, they, uh, they didn't th- give it much more than two thoughts. Me, that first edition stamp meant a whole lot because it told me, well, these they will never reproduce. The unlimiteds they could produce forever, right? So, uh, yeah, so I, I was lucky I had the experience of, of what collectibles mean and what limited editions mean and, and re, re, uh, reputable companies putting them out, what it means where they, like with Magic the Gathering, you know, they can reprint those like crazy. They uh, reserve lists and, and, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, once again, I can't really take much credit. It's just simply a thing that I knew at Mm -hmm. the time that I had learned in in my years of collecting. So how many first edition boxes do you think that there are? Okay. Yeah. That, uh, see, we know my nine, I might know of another, you know, 20. I don't know anybody with two, but I know a lot of people with one, uh, if I had to guess, and again, it's purely a guess, I would say maybe uh, 50 to 80 in the world. Yeah. They just simply weren't available. And there, and there may be less than that. The fewer there are, probably the better for me because mm-hmm. it makes mine a little more special, right? Um, but I would say 50 to 80, yeah. very, very possibly. A lot of people have one. Yeah. Are you ever going to open up like when it, you're just leaving them? Wow. What's the, yeah, what's the plan? They're, they're not even, they're not, they're, I, uh, do you know Placerville, California? Yeah. It's like north of Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, that's where they are. I have a storage locker, a special security type storage, you know, there that holds all my best collectibles. And uh, I mean, I might go up there once every two, three years. Uh, I would, I don't sell anything out of there. Uh, that'll all get passed on when I'm gone. Then what's and, is, is that passed on to your children yeah. or do you have the expectation that they're never going to sell that or that it's what's, what would you? Yeah, I know. What, what do you think? They, they yeah. do, I, don't think I don't think so. If you hey, tell but, them not but to, I'm wondering, mm, yeah, but why not like a museum? Why not mm-hmm. see if you can get some, some publicly funded or some, some museum that you could donate a portion of proceeds to charity and display mm-hmm. them. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of that will be going on. In fact, it's already drawn up, yeah. you know, as far as our charities are concerned. Uh, but the, the bulk of it, uh, you know, my boys will, will just, you know, have to figure it out in that, yeah. but you know, that, that was my goal from the beginning. You know, these, these are, if these ever end up being worth anything, you know, any of my collections, you know, that uh, I hope I've raised my boys in such a way that they would value it themselves or at the very least value my passion for yeah. for it. Now, opening up a museum or something, there was never really much call for it. But I've actually heard some things recently where some some of my stuff and some of the stuff in the community that a lot of the guys have is, you know, very rare special items that people would come to see. So that's that's not that could be something around the corner. I would do that. I would mm-hmm. pay like thirty bucks to mm-hmm. get access to a museum, and you walk in a room like this, they're all like first edition Charizards right. everywhere. Like that would be neat. Like yes. imagine the Smithsonian sponsoring a little like for for trading cards. I think it'd yeah. be really interesting. Right. I think it would be too. I would yeah. go too. Right. Well, I know yeah, that I a lot there, of people would. There was a show about a about a year ago somewhere in the Midwest where a lot of the guys got together. Uh, to put on a show, you know, where they could show off their wares and that, and they had a little museum thing, you know, set up, you know, that was curtained off and that they went in and they showed a first edition base box. They showed a PSA 10 mm-hmm. Charizard. They showed some of the Japanese trophy cards and things like that. Uh, and, and it was, it was very successful. So that tells you people do want to go see this stuff. You know, they, cause they, especially these days where the popularity is through the roof. Yep. Yeah. So as far as your own collection, have you ever considered or has your family wanted you to say, we should sell half of this? We could live Mm -hmm. like kings. We could buy a mansion. You could get whatever you want, just half of it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of lucky with with, uh, Tuan. She's kind of known as Queen Pokemon or 
uh, at Autism Instruct. Uh, she has just as much passion for this as I do. She loves it. She had never heard of it mm -hmm. 10 years ago because Pokemon wasn't the thing in Vietnam. Uh, but uh, in fact, it's over 10 years. It's like 12, 13 years ago. I saw her turn and look at me just then. <laughs> so, yeah, we should, we should, if she wants, we could uh, bring her on for, so let's meet her. Oh, okay. yeah. Twan, come here a minute. Come here a minute. Meeting Queen Pokemon. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> Queen Pokemon. Pokemans, there, yeah. <laughs> come here a minute. Hey, come on in. C come over here, say hello. Yeah, we're, we're talking about uh, when we met in Vietnam. Okay. And, and you had, hadn't heard about Pokemon at the time. You know, over Not there, and uh, and yet, uh, you know, we're just kind of telling our story. At the oh. time, he said uh, he had nothing, mm -hmm. but okay. he has a lot of cocks, and uh, he just said, "Come over here, visit." And then, if five years later you stay here for five years, if five years later you don't like it, then you can go, we go five back. Five years, yeah. Five, five years, years, that's a long, a long time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, five every, years, you know, by then you're settled. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why that's he's smart enough, yeah. yes. That was the and plan from the said, beginning. What card do you have? He said, Pokemon <laughs> card. I don't have no idea about Pokemon card at that time. And then when I moved here in 2010, I saw him like crazy. Night and day, He everything in it, on it. I said, Gary, you should... Sleep sometime, everything right? Pokemon. No, everything yeah. Pokemon. <laughs> and then 2012, I started to get in it, but not deeply like him because I have another vision, like, you know, that autism. Yeah. So um, at that time, not autism yet. Uh, autism is about uh, 2014. Yeah. So I start to, um, I even uh, start my eBay, but tell you the truth, I sell. Um, none zero dollar on the eBay, and yeah. then I close it. So I said, no, no, this is not for me. And I said, okay, just keep everything there for me. So I put everything in the storage. Wow. Yeah. And so you got her with Pokemon. Most guys would be like, come check out my mansion. I got a car. <laughs> but you said, come check out the <laughs> Pokemon card. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So and at, yeah, at wow. that time, I didn't know anything about Pokemon, and slowly I know it, but not totally, one hundred percent. In it, wow. but I support him. That's so nice. I trust his instinct and his love. And then, you so when you love someone, yeah. you love everything about that yeah. person. That's what. Do happened. you ever get in fights about Pokemon? That it's too much, too much Pokemon. You tell me. I didn't have Instagram. Uh, recently, I yeah. started Instagram. Is that you have to spend time with your family, Daddy? <laughs> and and then when I sign up Instagram, he bum. He said, "My wife in." He post on one of my boss. Uh, his boss say, uh, "My wife just get into Instagram. Just say uh, follow her something." And the next morning, I saw what four hundred people, four hundred something you know people. Yeah, what's, your follow what's your Instagram? Everyone who's watching, go go follow her. Let's let's do this. People here, seventy thousand. Yeah, 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 Okay. And then at autism instruct. instruct. Yes, like and it's instruction. Autism instruct. And I'll it's for a good cause, uh, helping charity yes. towards autism. Mm -hmm. I think this is good. So go, guys, just do it. Just do it. And then, Please. and then, <laughs> at then I say, oh my gosh, this is what you spend time for. You love. And then I fell in, fell in love. Oh, I was the director of a resort, casino, yeah. hotel, right on the South China Sea, and uh, Tuan was hired to be the assistant director. Plus, she spoke multiple languages, which I needed because very few people spoke English yeah. there. And uh, and so we fell in love. And I told her, just come back for that five years. And five and years. if you, because, <laughs> because my sons, yeah, my sons, sell, yeah. yeah, my you sons would yeah, be, yeah, uh, yeah. my sons would be, we're like 14, 15, they'd be 19, 20. Yeah. And then I'd feel okay about going. I said, yeah. and if you're not happy after five years, That's I'll right. go with you back to Vietnam yeah. and I'll live there the rest of my life. Right. And I was, I do what I said. Say, was that you know? the Pawn Stars promise? The <laughs> yeah. Pawn Stars <laughs> promise. <laughs> 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 right. Right. Try to get out of it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Sign a contract, though, yeah. The, so. Those things started happening, and like Tuan was in that episode too, but she was one of the crowd. Mm. They brought they brought you know some people in you know from the yeah. to be in the episode you know as customers in that. But yeah, fortunately after that five years, 
she had gone to UNLV, gotten another degree, and then wanted to start other things, had the baby, mm-hmm. and and then decided, you know, you know that she wanted to stay. Good. And I went, <laughs> because I would have left. Yeah. You know, just like I probably would have had to have sold to Rick. Right. Because I told him I would. Yeah. Uh, but I, had a I lot got of lucky. Work in your favor. I have, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. You know how to talk. Yeah, which would change everything. But it's yeah. good because you would have honored it, so yeah. you deserve. Yeah, I like you that. Yeah. You yeah. would have done it. Yeah, I but w- it just happened. That the cards were in your favor. Right, that's true. Wow. That, a good way to put yeah. it. The yeah. cards were in my favor. Yeah. Yes. You know what? I think I think your good luck. So how mm-hmm. about this? Let's open up the pack. Oh, Jack. How about this? What I'm thinking, Jack. If you want to get some, uh, some just, just some B-roll. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any sleeves, so I'm planning just to put the card back in here. Mm-hmm. But if we get a, a first edition uh, Blaine's Charizard mm-hmm. or an Erica's Venusaur, we're going to go crazy here. Okay, so we got Brock's Geodude, Erica's Weeping Bell, Energy, Blaine's Taurus Mankey, Bell Sprout, Mite, Sabrina's Abra. Oh, we got a Blaine's Charmander. Nice. That's good. I hope that's a sign of something to come. Oh, let's see. Mm-hmm. Rocket Snorlax. Wow. Not hollow, but still. I guess it's... Uh, I missed it from the back. I guess with these, is it... So it's not three from the back on this one. There's another card behind that one. No, Misty Seeking? Uh-uh. Oh, there's not. No, it was the Rocket Snorlax. Oh, okay. That was the so, oh, okay. Not, uh Not a hollow. But we still got a Blaine's got a Charmander. Charmander yeah. That's it's uh, probably a nine. It's a little off center. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, what do you think of this? The Rocket Snorlax. That's the rare. Nice. Did it. I think, too, we should see what's in your uh, what's in your briefcase. Okay. Also, to throw this out there, we haven't mentioned this. We are filming it in Las Vegas at Steve Aoki's house the DJ, because Gary and him are friends. So yeah. we arrived at this house, and I have to say, it is now, I, f- I feel like you keep saying this is the coolest house I've ever been to, ever mm-hmm. since I started hanging out with Graham. But now this is definitely the coolest house I've ever been to. Right. What house did we, oh no, it was the um, the one with Kevin O'Leary. It was the did. one with Kevin O'Leary, yeah. and then also it was the one that we did with Christine. That was like Christine's the coolest house. house. This, between all the, the houses, this is by far the nicest. It has a, a jump, like ball pit yep. or something, like a foam pit. Trampoline and Trampoline. ball pit. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Literally everything anyone could ever want is yeah. all mm-hmm. within this house. And it's a very, very nice house as well. Yeah. And you guys took advantage of that too. We, we did. did. Yeah. We jumped in the ball pit. Yeah. Jumping and stuff. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Put some pictures up here. Yeah. We right. had a fantastic time. So Steve, mm-hmm. thank you so much for, for doing this. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. How much is in? How much is this worth? This box. You want to guess? Yeah, yeah. I want to take a guess. So you said you have multi. You said over ten million. Now. No, no. Uh, over ten million means total collection. Means my entire Pokemon right. collection. And you have all the. This good is just stuff. a small part. Of that. A small. Part. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So all your good stuffs up north. So I'm gonna say in in that briefcase, I feel like I'm gonna say something low, and it's gonna be stupid. So be honest. Just be honest. Don't 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 try. Just be okay, what okay, you really okay, think okay. it is. What I really think that is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, one point six million dollars. I was gonna say two. Okay, it's about double those those no. numbers. <laughs> yeah. There's. I I actually no. uh, knowing that we were gonna discuss this today. Yeah. I actually check current market values of what I could sell these for within seven days. If I want, if I was going to sell them, what could I get within seven days? So these are not outrageous numbers. These are sellable. These are what they would sell for quickly mm-hmm. in that. And it amounts to, do you want me to open this? Well, tell us how much and okay. then open it. And then I got one question for you before you open it. Okay. It, uh, it amounts to $3.9 million wow. inside this case. And uh, it's not a huge case, but it is some of the most special items I have. How do you insure this? That's what I want to know. You don't. It's not insured? It is not insured. Can't you get this insured? There's got to be someone who's willing to insure this. Yeah, there there are some collectible, uh, some companies that will insure collectibles, but... Put yourself in the in the uh, place of an insurance company that are is trying to insure these. Uh, 
how easy it would be to take advantage of uh, an insurance company. I mean, these are just little cards, right? You know, uh, I could I could say right now, you know, well, I'm missing three cards, you know, a uh, million dollars. I'm missing three. What's what's going on here, right? So they are not that open to uh, insuring that collectibles like this. Uh, there are a couple of companies that do. They are so outrageous, and the restrictions are, are so confining that uh, there's uh, nobody with half a brain would would yeah. take advantage so of it. So, how do you protect against these either being stolen or mm -hmm. damaged? Okay, what I what I did to get these ready for you was the majority I took out of uh, one of my safety deposit boxes at bank of at our bank. Yeah. And uh, which I have a, a decent sized box where I keep the most expensive things. Yes, you can in, you can insure things through uh, bank safety deposit boxes, but there's little reason to. If there's a safe place, those that's the safe place. Yeah. And the one I have has special restrictions on safety deposit boxes. It's not your normal uh, system, bank system. Uh, in other words, I am 100% confident nobody could ever get into that and, and they're 100% safe. And then the balance of them, I just keep in a storage. Lo I have a couple storage lockers here in Las Vegas also. I keep them here and, uh, you know, inconspicuously, not in my name, you know, because people can research right. my name. Uh, in fact, that was, uh, you know, some, I think, I think it was Steve Aoki's business manager who gave me that advice that take everything out of your name, all your storage lockers, don't use your name, don't use uh, Tuan's name, at autism, instruct. <laughs> yeah, follow them, uh, follow them. <laughs> follow, like you say, and smash the like That's button. Destroy right? it. Yeah, yeah, destroy the, because of the uh, YouTube algorithm. Yep. Uh, so... Uh, I, I keep those in a storage locker and very inconspicuous, and uh, and so I I feel you know very confident with that too, because I got I got Steve's manager he he set me all up to do things properly. Good and yeah. So well, let's see what's in here. I'm uh, really excited for this. Okay, Jack, this is going to be the most expensive thing that you've seen. For, oh no, maybe Christine's ring was one point six million dollars. Jack held it. And how much did you guess it was worth? Like fifty grand, three hundred grand. She says, she, "Yeah, she says one point six. And his face. You could, you could pause. Mm -hmm. You could actually put this up here. Freeze frame on your face as she tells you the thing. <laughs> it's just this. It's it's priceless. Graham has introduced me to a pretty yeah. different lifestyle. Yeah, uh, we have this thing where just Jack reacts to things. Mm. So and and because he has, you have such genuine reactions to everything. It's just this utter amazement. It's really fun. It's just it's just fun. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see this. Okay. I'm wondering if I should uh, B-roll some of this. Should we do this before or afterwards? Uh, we can do it afterwards. You sure? Okay. Okay. Now there's... I feel like, yeah. Numerous different things. I don't know how you want to show this. Um, let's do let's it do afterwards. afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do B-roll afterwards. You, sh I, I don't want to touch anything. You, you show us and. Oh, you can touch. Really, any of it. it's all protected. Yeah. Can I grab oh, one? Anything, of course, sure. So this is a shadowless gem mint, ten Charizard. Yeah, market value. That's not first edition, correct? No, it's not. Okay, so uh, market value for those. I know, uh, you know, one of the guys that we all know in the community just paid one hundred twenty thousand for one of those. Here, Jack, you want to be so careful with that? No, no, no. No? Oh, you could what take it, you could throw it across no, the you floor. Couldn't. It wouldn't hurt no. anything. How no. is it? How is it? Can I grab one more? Everything. How is it How is it so protected in there that it, if I threw it, I'm not going to, but it wouldn't move around and damage at all? No, no. How is it so protected in there? Totally, totally safe. Ow. It's one of the reasons for uh, for grading cards for a lot of people. It's just to give them, you know, life, lifelong protection. In but that. How does now, it, maybe so maybe you want to drop it off a roof. Thousand dollars. That's minimum one hundred thousand dollars. You can get a little more than that. Yeah. Wow. That those are shadowless PSA ten. Uh, did you grade these or did you buy? Uh, I bought. 
of the shadowless, I would say, you know, over these years, maybe uh -huh. I graded, I think there's 12 of them in there. And I think I graded half and bought half. All right, Here, maybe, VA? maybe take these. Oh my. These are all shadowless. I don't know how much. We got, oh, you know what? I got, I got to get a picture with, with all of these. Oh, yeah, we well, got to get pictures. We got to get pictures. Got to get pictures. Okay. Oh my that God. That is insane. So wait, wait. So how much am I holding here? How many, how many is this? I think One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a million bucks. You want to hold a million dollars, Jack? <laughs> In Pokemon cardboard. My hands are my hands are sweating because I want to make sure like nothing happens nothing to this. Nothing can happen. I'm, I'm so worried. I'm still worried about it. If you don't juggle them, juggle with them. You could probably juggle it. with them and be okay too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they're all first edition gem mint tens. Six of them. Right? I we'll get pictures afterwards. I really want a picture right now. There's a little speck right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gem Mint 10 doesn't mean perfect, you know, of course. Yeah. If, you know, the process to make these, these all come on big sheets. The sheets get fed off of each rollers, roll and peel the sheets off. Cutters come and cut the edges on those. Yeah. Do you have any that are, like, basically perfect? What would you say um, the most perfect one is? Here, let's, you uh, know, let's put, I, I, I would, wanna, that, that, that right there. That yeah, might... Just, that might bore you because I would have to go very closely through those with a mag with my uh, you know special magnified jeweler's loop, and some are a little better than others. Wow, this is it, man! That's the one. This is a BGS ten signed. Yes. Wow. In this case, the signature means very little. Yeah. Uh, Arita, who did design that Charizard, uh, and it's signed on the case, not the card. Right. I mean, never would you <laughs> let him sign that card because that's extremely special. Wait, who signed this? Uh, Arita. Artist Arita. Of this card. Yeah, yeah, the artist. Yeah, but which in a, in a lot of cases, that's a big deal. But this card is such a big deal, his signature means nothing. Yeah, I, I could take, I, I, I'm tempted to take it off of there. Of Why? The it's just on the case. It's not on the card. The signature. I see, unfortunately, this for centering, for this not to get a mm -hmm. black label, it's the top is just a fraction. <laughs> I know. Too tall. That's it. Now, this card is the one you mentioned. Lee and I, Lee on Hart and yeah. I went to Beckett's. I wanted to get this uh, uh, crossed over to a black label, all tens. Yeah. And I gave it to them and they went through it and they said, I'm sorry, we just can't. You know, we, it's, it's a 10, it's yeah. a pristine 10, but we can't upgrade you on that. It's a shame that they can't just file down that top just a little <laughs> bit. I know you wouldn't even want to touch Ooh, this card. Not, not if you knew yeah. how much that's worth. Do you think <laughs> this is <laughs> the only one in existence? No, there are three of those in existence. Three uh, Beckett's gem, uh, pristine 10s. I own two of them. I had the only two up until about three, four months ago. Only two in the world. Uh, and somehow somebody came up with one, graded it through Beckett's, and a third one came out. Nobody knows who it was. We don't know who it was. I'm trying to find them. In fact, I've You're offered out there. Yeah. I, I've offered fifty thousand dollars to anybody that can find me the third one of those and that I can complete a transaction to own it. So I, I own the only three. Wow. And nobody has come forward. What, yeah. Now, if you check this, the uh, serial numbers, the cards before it mm -hmm. and the cards after it are like it was a binder set. It's like somebody had a binder, took the cards out all first edition and had them graded. And by chance and by luck, they ended the Charizard ended up with a pristine 10. Can, but yeah. the other ones were sixes and sevens. So you could tell that this was no pro who got it. So it could be just some random person got it. I will never find out who it was. It'll stay hidden, you know, essentially forever, at least as far as I'm yeah. concerned. How and, much is that card worth? Okay. I'm, let now, me guess, Jack. Mm -hmm. Guess how much you think that, that one card is worth. Yes. I thought a 10 was worth 300 grand. Not a Beckett. Beckett is like you have PSA, but then you have 
Beckett's like the Rolls Royce. PSA, I would say, is like the Mercedes of grading. This is the Rolls Royce. This is like you take a PSA, you put a PSA under a fine tooth comb, and then you get Beckett. There's 121 of those PSA 10s in the world. 121 PSA 10 of the PSA 10. That's a Beckett 10. And there's three. There's three of those. There's 121 of the PSA 10s. So that gives you a a little better idea of the difference in price. That is the 10s of the 10s. It's like the top 1% or the top 0.1%. There you go. You guess first. I'll guess second. Now, you can't be wrong because one has never sold because I would never sell them. And the other one's never shown up. So this is all guesswork. I feel like if it's the Rolls Royce to Mercedes equivalent, mm-hmm. I'm going to say $1 million. Yeah, I would say if, if the t- 10 out of 10, I would say this is probably one. worth up to $2 million to the right collector. So I'd say $2 million. I would be, I, I would have to agree to that yeah. <laughs> price that's an awful lot i'm there is no right answer to this if i had to put a number like you guys just did i would say maybe eight hundred thousand to a million yeah would you pay a million dollars for one of those that's a good question oh man you don't want to tip your hat don't let twan <laughs> <laughs> uh i offered for anybody who could find that third one for me, I offered seven hundred and fifty thousand and fifty thousand finders fee. So that would be my maximum. Yeah. Why? I really couldn't yeah. do. I really, yeah. you know, it'd be too hard to do more than that. What's it'd be your, hard to yeah. do that. What's your advantage of getting all three besides just having the market? Just because all, all these years I had the only one. Right for many years I had the only one. Then a second one popped up. And with Leon Hart's help as a middle he, middleman for me in Dallas, he found it, got the girl to agree to sell it. I flew to Dallas. We completed that transaction. He did a video on it with How him and I. Uh, okay, see that's interesting. I don't mind uh, because of because of the girl. I can't say the exact amount, but I can say under a hundred thousand. I paid for it, and that's four or five years ago or something like that. Uh, so I had the only one and then this one came and I bought this one for under a hundred thousand that gave me the only two. And so I've always had the only ones right now. This third one came. How did you hear about the third one? Uh, it, uh, Beckett's advertised it, you know, they advertised, you know, that this card has shown up and they put it on the front page of their website. And so, okay. Now those yeah. are, so you uh, got the base. Yeah, those base are first edition. Yeah, those are the uh the the family of those guys. Those are the first edition uh hollows that came with that first edition base set. Champ. That's all the, nine and a half. Yeah, those are all nine point fives. Do you have any tens? No. Of the base? No. Have you wanted tens of the base? No, uh, not real. Not Beckett tens. Why? How hard are they and how expensive are they? Very, very hard. Very hard. Those, I mean, you figure three of those in the world and anybody who has one of any quality is getting it graded, right? Right. There's no none hiding away and at least not likely. That's a beauty, huh? Wow. Mm -hmm. What's the Blastoise worth? The Blastoise, what are the subgrades? Nine and a halfs. All, th- all four? Yeah. That's a beautiful one. Yeah, that's a, that's a saw. That would be equivalent to a PSA 10. Oh, yeah. So maybe uh, 30,000, something like that. So what's the what's off on the centering on this one? Uh, well, like Graham said, he saw just a little tiny bit of an off, top to bottom, I think you said, Graham. Yeah, I think right? the top is a are, little are bit too sure much. Are they sure about that? They, yeah, they, they, sure? they, 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 it's yeah. so close. I know, it's... But that's the main reason I sent it back in to hopefully get it upgraded to a black label 10, 10, 10, 10. That right now it's 10, 10, 10, 9.5. But they said the same thing. They said the same thing. You got to wait till they like recycle their employees. Yeah. Have you thought about that? Maybe <laughs> to just, just keep person? sending it and yeah, sending it until trying. eventually yeah, keep send trying. It to someone else. Or yeah. Something so they know. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a famous card that they would know what I'm doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cause they, they know, they know me. 
But you know what? Couldn't you have do it under someone else's name? Only just because take the, the card, card. They all know the card is mine. Take, you know, take yeah. the card out. You take the card out Ugh, under never. another person's name. No, too risky. Don't it's they take very the risky. Yeah. No, they don't take it out when they uh, when they uh, re regrade it, unless it qualifies for an upgrade then and they take it out. So it's no, too dangerous. It's too too. I really don't even know what to compare that to. If you're trying to cut it in like one of those little plastic shards hit the card and cause a little scratch, suddenly you're that could be like eighty three right. That well no, that could be a difference between eight hundred thousand dollars and sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. That a little so that's why as long as they're in there, again, I wouldn't care what you guys did. You guys could yeah. play catch with them. They're they're good. They're safe. But once you start cracking them open, it's dangerous. What do you think uh, the Gyarados is? This is the card that I uh, pulled. Uh-huh. And unfortunately, oh, there's yeah, a Oh, yeah, that's little, what you pulled on the live stream. Yeah, there's a yes. little tiny white nick on mine. Like, tiny, tiny, tiny little speck on yes. that side. Otherwise, center is good. What would, what's this card worth? That would put it to a nine, probably. Yeah. And that would probably, I don't know, maybe, well, for a 10, it's probably about 10,000 if it gets a PSA 10. Yeah. For a for a nine, it would be one or two thousand, maybe. Oh, and then what you you have packs in here? These are all first edition base packs. Wow! And you have no desire of opening these. What, what if there? No. What if there's a a, a BGS ten yeah. Charizard in there? <laughs> I know, I know. Sometimes when I go to bed at night, I that's my first dream. You know, is what's inside there? It's so hard. There's uh, twenty six. Of those packs here. Yeah. Is that a heavy pack? Uh, there's eight heavy packs out of the 26. So there's eight packs that do have a hollow foil inside. And that's that could be zero Charizards. That could be one Charizard. It could be two Charizards, right? Statistically, yeah. it would be one, though, right? Statistically, it would be uh, about half a about a 50% chance of there being a Charizard out of those eight packs. About a 50% chance. Be, uh, even a little bit less because I think you have 12 in a box, 12 hollow foils mm -hmm. in a box. And uh, the chance for a Charizard uh, out of those, there's 15 hollow foils possible. 12 hollow foils in a pack means you're not even guaranteed a hollow foil out of a full box. Mm -hmm. You're guaranteed 12 hollows out of the 15 possible hollows. And then some of those hollows can be duplicated. Yes. You might get two of something. You might get three of something. Could you ever get two hollows in one pack? I got, oh no, no, not in one pack, but in one box, one time I got three Charizards. Wow. Did you film in, it? In one box. This was before that. This was like 2005. And I do have two witnesses that it happened. One was my youngest son, Devin. And uh, the other one was uh, it was a business partner, Joel, who's still alive, lives in Columbus, Ohio, and he would attest for it. So, because they they were both there watching me open this box, three first edition base Charizards. That's not the whole story. All three graded PSA ten. Wow! Oh my god! And I'm saying that with people alive that saw me do it, right? So, what do you think? Yeah, day. what are those first edition packs worth? Okay, uh, they're worth, depending how you sell it light, if you sell a light pack, maybe eight to 10,000 for a light pack, that's pretty much guaranteed no hollow foil. If you sell a heavy pack where you're guaranteed a heavy, like out of those eight of those, uh, then about 25,000 for a guaranteed hollow pack. And if you sell them unweighed, which means right now you just grab one and buy it and open it, uh, then I would say right in the area of fifteen to eighteen thousand. It's that much. Yeah. I remember when Logan announced mm -hmm. his packs for eleven thousand bucks. Yes. I did the research on. I'm like, these packs are really worth nine. Right. And I'm like, I'm paying a premium for the shout out from Logan. Yes. But I figured, well, it's it's good. I can make a video from it, so I can make it worth it at least. There you go. Um, it's crazy to see how much the values have gone up. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's it's real. It's real safe to say that uh, 
like with Logan, with your thing that you that you did at that time, he had just bought a first edition PSA ten Charizard for one hundred and fifty thousand. So now that same card that come out of those packs is three hundred and fifty thousand, right? So obviously now that price that you guys paid. Uh, it would have to be more than that today because the price of the yeah. cards, especially that Charizard, is so high. Uh, like, had you not broke that pack, mm -hmm. the one you have, you could have sold that heavy pack because you could have weighed it with the Gyarados. That would show up as heavy. Mm -hmm. Easily sell it for twenty five thousand, maybe thirty thousand on eBay. I, they're still yeah. trying to get forty thousand. Yeah, I think the curiosity for me to know what's inside, I couldn't do it. I, I'll tell you that a whole experience, I think, was worth it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, meeting him. Oh, yeah. I, I loved watching yeah. you guys. I, I loved watching that. Yeah. And yeah, if you had to pick a second favorite card, what would it be? My absolute favorite Pokemon card is Venusaur. It's not Charizard. It's not Charizard. Why? There's something about the looks of that base set Venusaur, you know, something about the nose, the nose on the artwork that, that just, for me, just makes me want to grab that nose and shake it. You know, it's just so cool. Right. The artwork on the green, which is my favorite color, and, and the, the, the look of on his face and the, and the bulk of his nose, it's... Uh, when that when that first came out, that's been my favorite card ever since. So base wow. set Venusaur yeah. artwork, even the Erica's Venusaur. I think you mentioned earlier. I love that Venusaur yeah. too. But the base set Venusaur is my favorite card. And then I would have to say the yeah. Charizards. What would you say for people who want to get into collecting? Let's say as both a hobby and an investment. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it for people to buy like? PSA sevens and sixes and eights, or is it worth it to save up and get one good like PSA ten instead of a whole bunch of sevens? Hmm. I'm the the tens have escalated so much that it really is out of reach. You know, for the majority of people, those are really out of reach. And with that being the case, they're going to be liking the nines and getting the nines. The nines are getting scarce. Then they're going to be liking the eights. I like as an investment opportunity. I like the lower graded ones, the sixes, sevens, and eights, because eventually those higher grades are going to fade out. They're going to disappear. People are going to get them in their collections, like me, and not release them, not not give them up. So I, I like the I like the idea of premium cards like these in lower grades very much. So you think that would be a good investment? I, yeah, I do. But now, do. but you're but you're saying if someone had the money. Yeah. to buy a higher grade, to go with the highest grade you could afford because it's that curve, the higher the grade, all of a sudden it rises exponentially. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if mon let's, let's just say money isn't as much of an issue, uh, then I would go with the higher graded cards. Okay. Yes, I would because anytime you look at a graph of uh, value changes in that, uh, you see the, the middle grades going up a little bit and if you see spikes, it's always those PSA tens that show the spike. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and you know, I wanted to ask you something. Yeah, if I could. Oh yeah, anything, because, whatever you want. Because uh, you know, I was thinking. Let me grab one of these. Yeah. I was thinking that you know, for investment opportunities, uh, of course, you know, we know each other. I know that you have rental properties mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, you. In Los Angeles, or they might be more, I don't know, but say a $750,000 home, yep. you can buy, fix it up a little bit, do your $50,000 thing, and then rent it out yep. and all that. Or you can buy for that exact same $750,000 this. <laughs> Instead of a house, you're buying this yeah. slab, this car. Obviously, upkeep and everything is different. I know that's probably all yep. shooting, shooting through your head, right? In that, what do you think investment wise because a lot of what you do is for yeah, investment it's you it's, know yeah. this is an investment and yet equal value today yeah. if they were equal value today how, how do you feel about that what would you yeah, think it's tough because i feel like with the investment property mm -hmm. you're guaranteed a certain roi on that you could you could go in and see okay i see all these houses are selling at this price i know if i put fifty thousand in i could come out with a hundred thousand equity it's going to rent for this price i'm making this month it, it, it's it's guaranteed when right. done right. There's very little risk. Mm -hmm. 
with this. The issue that I see with this compared to rental properties yes. is that you're not guaranteed income. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to leverage this and it's hard to borrow against this. It's hard to go to this card to the bank and say, I want to borrow 300 grand. I want to do a cash out refinance so I can go move my money around. This is a lot more illiquid. Good point. Yes. That's that's mm -hmm. the biggest difference I see. Mm -hmm. This is really interesting to me because I feel like mm -hmm. you could make more money, I think, with Pokemon, but it's just the risk. Got, you yeah. take the risk that you're not going to be able to s replace your income from this. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of... It, it reminds me, I don't want to compare it to, uh, to to Bitcoin, let's just say, but it's similar in that you can't borrow against it. Right. And you're going into it with the expectation that someone else is going to pay more. Mm -hmm. Now, I think with this, I think just the rarity alone is worth something. Mm -hmm. It's just that that's, it's, it's giving up something guaranteed for something that has the potential of outperforming anything else i see so the it's because it's a little little bit or quite a bit more speculative yes that it's, that, that takes yes. away from some of the current value of it and, yes from yeah. from a utility mm -hmm. standpoint mm -hmm. it's hard to go to the bank and say i want to pull a credit line from this and then buy right. stocks you couldn't with do real that estate, at a bank it's yeah. just get an appraisal done mm -hmm. and within a week they give you a credit line or with stocks, it's instant. Right. They'll just say, what's your portfolio value? They have a calculation of stocks. Okay, we'll lend you a million bucks. Right. So with this, it's harder. Mm -hmm. um, Would you say that also with most collectibles? Yes. So I don't think it's just, I don't just think it's any, You no. think that's collectibles in general? In general. Mm -hmm. But I think- Artwork. Yeah, same art, thing. Got you. Yeah, same mm -hmm. thing. Um, what was I just about to say? Um, reminds me of uh, like uh, Dubai low license plates like if you get a license plate that just says three or two oh, or seven uh -huh. you're selling millions of dollars now okay yeah mm. low digit license plates in dubai that's the ultimate sign of wealth is oh. when someone has a low digit license plate because oh. they had to pay top dollar for that very interesting yeah. mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this this is what i feel like because like i i'm so because now i want one like really right. badly PSA 10 yeah mm -hmm. yeah because now <laughs> buy one dude <laughs> Because I see like that's a that's no. I I wouldn't GPA. sell any. <laughs> you could buy one, Graham. You could find one. Oh no, no. You know, knowing yeah. that the last one sold for three hundred and fifty-eight thousand, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a record high. You would have to match that or go a little bit above it. Yeah. I mean, I you you know what I have, yeah. and I think that's overpriced. And I and yet I own yeah. them. I'm affecting my own yeah. values by it's, saying that yeah. because a lot of people listen to me. Right about this, uh, I think three hundred and fifty-eight thousand is excessive, and I don't think they're worth that. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. think they're worth two fifty. What? What? Honestly, yeah. What I'm concerned about mm -hmm. is the Logan Paul video exploded the hobby, and you have so many people going after these cards because they see it going up in value so fast, so they're all yes. jumping into it, right? Paying top dollar just because they want to get it. Yes, and I think. A few years from now, some of that's going to simmer down. It's going to settle, and it's going to stay there until the next thing comes up. I think it, it reminds me a little bit of like the Bitcoin thing, where it seems like every seven years, got boom, it just explodes, goes down, settles. There's a new base. Something else comes along, boom. Same thing, even higher next time. Goes down, settles. That that's what I think maybe could happen. You know what? Here, I yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, okay, and I think. The worst time to buy would be today right. to buy a PSA 10 first edition Charizard because I totally agree with you. Two, three years from now, I think they're going to go back down where they belong, right. which is probably in the 200,000 range. I mean, I, I'm not really gambling much by saying that because I'm not going to sell mine anyway. 10 years, two years, doesn't make any difference. But my honest feeling is exactly the same as yours. Wait today. Two, three years from now, they're going to be where they belong. Yeah. And then pick them up. And then it could go through a natural. Now, from 1999 to this day, these have had a gradual increase. They have never, the Charizards have never leveled off or gone down. They have all had a, 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 a proper increase every day for the last 21 years. Never changed. This spike that happened is sudden and unexpected. And uh, 
But yeah, like if, if it weren't for the Logan Paul video, where do you think these would be trading at? Because before that video, these at the top were selling at like 40, 50. Yeah, the they, I think one sold for 72 uh, publicly. I know of some that sold privately prior to uh, the Logan Paul uh, purchase uh, in the, all of them under 100,000 in that. Uh, but I got many offers for 130,000. Yeah. Now, sure. since since this is like a podcast about investing and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you said that you'd be willing to spend seven hundred and fifty or well, eight hundred total thousand dollars in order to get a. I'd BGS. have to borrow from you guys, but yeah, I would do that. How it? <laughs> how Charizard is collateral. Right. How, <laughs> how you are go. you getting those funds? Like, yeah, how do you that, borrow? Let's talk about building wealth right. and how you have built your wealth through Pokemon mm -hmm. cards throughout time. Yeah, well, I'm very, I'm very pokey rich. Very pokey rich. Not rich. Just pokey rich. Just pokey rich, pretty much. Uh, of course, I've worked my whole life and I've worked hard my whole life. I've saved up a little bit. Uh, but then just about all my money I put into my collectibles. And, you know, certainly if I were to sell off collectibles, I, I would do well. Uh, but then, you know, then again, I can tell you, you know, another interesting story, you know, maybe privately, you know, about that, you know, that situation, but, uh, because Pokemon has been, you see, I'd say 80% of my collectibles in my storage lockers that I work so hard and love them so much are absolutely worthless, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, no value whatsoever. You know, like fallen empires, you know, trading cards and things like that that I worked so hard to put together in that. They just simply haven't, you know, gone up at all and most of them have dropped down to nothing. They're not worth anything. Uh, so a, a lot of that, those efforts I put, it just so happens that Pokemon has been ex extremely successful. And that was what I concentrated on for, you know, 20 years. So... A lot of the, lot of the, you know, expendable income I have, why I could buy that card for that price now, is because of what Pokemon has done, and I sold some things that are of less consequence to me. So you still sell cards, and that's how you're able to. to oh leave. yeah, yeah, right. but every everything is done privately now. I do it through friends, right. and in that I don't sell. I think on eBay, I think I have two listings that are absurd amount things. I don't sell anywhere except privately, like, you know, through Logan or Steve or, you know, you know, just, just through friends. And if you don't mind answering this, sure. how much of your net worth is in Pokemon cards? What percentage? At, at, you don't have to say an exact number if you're no, uncomfortable saying that. No, I mean, I, I would have a pretty good idea. I, I would, I would say, I would say probably with these spikes in values, I would have to think my Pokemon collection takes up at least 80% of my total net worth. And I wouldn't have said that a year ago. You know, it yeah, might have been like 20, 30 percent. Yeah. yeah, 30, 40. And what about uh, investments like real estate and other stuff like that? Do you yeah. invest in that or well, is it m more so just alternative? Well, that, that's an interesting thing. I, I have never invested in real estate, you know, ever. I've owned homes in the past. Uh, our last home we owned here in Henderson was in a retirement community. Uh, and then the little girl came along, our little daughter came along, and we had to move out of that. That was actually the last home we purchased, you know, was that one. Uh, so I don't have any uh, real estate investments at all right now. We are wow. looking for a house now, though, uh, that I can also explain to you later on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is there, is there under any condition that you would sell the first edition Charizard at PSA 10? Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, only, because, only because I sold two mainly for the good of the game, yeah. the good of the hobby. Plus, I love the Shadowless the most. Right. I, and I have double the number of Shadowless. In that. And I think the Shadowless I, I are rare. And I think overall, I think they're a better investment than first edition. Why is that? There's 121 PSA 10 first edition Charizards. Mm -hmm. There's only 54 PSA 10 Shadowless Charizards. And yet there were more Char Shadowless Charizards produced. But don't you think that's just because people haven't graded the Shadowless cards because they felt like it's Good. not as... Excellent question. Yeah. 
Excellent question, but absolutely not. Mm. Because if you look at the nine populations, the nine populations are much higher for the Shadowless than they are for first edition, if you get my drift. Yeah. See, in other words, the, uh, the number graded are very similar, but the numbers that got tens, and also people collected, like me, first editions. And then when the Unlimited series came out, the Shadowless, those went into people's decks and they started playing them in that. So the shadowless ones were the first unlimited. Nobody knew there was going to be a shadowed version afterwards. Uh, so those got played with and damaged. And so I think that's the main reason they're rarer and there's fewer. So if you were to pick one card mm -hmm. that you say, Graham, you should go and buy this card, invest in it. I think 10 years from now, you'll, you'll do better than 7% a year. Let's say, which card would you pick? I would pick the Shadowless Charizard. <laughs> what about a first edition Venusaur? Do you think maybe the Venusaur and Blastoise might do well, or you really think the Shadowless? You know Charizard? the spike. The spike. See, we're we're talking as we're you know right in the middle of a spike in Pokemon, and it, it's it's kind of like you know when when your housing market you know reaches the top where everything is more expensive than it's ever been before. And, you know, Brentwood and Beverly Hills and, you know, these different areas, they're all up 150, 200%. And then you get asked, you know, where would you recommend? Should I buy in Bel Air, Bent, you know, uh, Brentwood? Or it'd be hard to answer that because they're, they're all at their all-time highs. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong about that, yeah. but that's the kind of the way... I see it. I, I don't think it's it's that smart buying things when they're at the top that they've ever been because how much higher are they going to go? You yeah. Know? That Charizard, 358000 that's absolutely insane. Mm. It's not worth that. What do you think the base Charizard is worth today versus what it should be worth? Base Unlimited? Base Unlimited, PSA 10. Okay, yeah, that, that's a that's a really good one because I, I have 52 PSA 10 unlimited Charizards. Isn't so, that the entire PSA market? <laughs> no, there's there's more. <laughs> Wait, how many PSA 10 unlimited? Is it? I, I'd have to, I haven't looked in a long time, maybe 400, 500, okay. maybe something. I'd yeah. have to double check. But there, uh, a year ago, a PSA 10 was probably worth about 1,500, 2,000. Now they're probably worth 10 to 15,000. Wow. So they've gone up 10 times in one year. And that's this card right no, here. No, that's not those that we're talking about. Uh, base unlimited. Oh, base unlimited. Shadowed. God, I got shadowed it. Sorry, sorry, shadow lists. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, well, these are a whole different okay. uh, thing. Those were maybe 30,000 a year ago, and now they're that was, over 100,000. That's over 100,000, really? Wow. Oh, it, what, yeah, what do you I, think it should I, be you, worth? I, yeah. could, I could take yeah. your phone right now yeah. and I could sell every single one of those for 100000 before we finish this interview. <laughs> it's absolutely the, wow. right, the right price today. Why do you uh, continue buying these cards and continuing the collection that you already have so much of? I'm, it's an illness. May, yeah, <laughs> yeah. May, may, maybe maybe we we need a Doctor Phil here or <laughs> yeah. something. I you know I don't I don't know why it's <laughs> it's a good thing I did and it's a good thing I do because it's made an awful lot of money. If I were to liquidate, if I were to yeah. sell, uh, I don't know why I want more. Why do I want that third one? Like you asked me before, yeah. I don't know why I want. That well, it makes sense one. why you want the third one because yeah. then you would have all three. Have them all. Then you would yeah. have the market. Right. But but mm -hmm. buying something that you wouldn't own a hundred percent of. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I just want them. I just you know love them so much, and the more I have, the happier I am. Do you have any other like expensive tastes or anything? You. Uh, do you drink Starbucks? I, not in a million years would I do that. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying I, I'm, a, I'm as smart as Graham, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to frugality and that. Uh, but I love the way he is. You know, when I see those things and I see when you talk about dates. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, that, that's me. What you're saying yeah. is exactly what I want to be yeah. and exactly what I want to do. And I think it's so cool in that but then oddly with with spending in that with Tuan or with little Akara mm. 
I spend every nickel in my pocket and, and I would, and I would just be so happy about yeah. that. My heart is absolutely what Graham is, what he, what he, mm -hmm. adv what you advocate yeah. in that. But when it comes to those two girls, mm -hmm. I mean, if just next time when you're at my house, sure. I'm going to show you her toys. Okay. And I mean, it's almost like every day I have to buy her a toy because I want her to be happy. I want to see that smile. Yeah. I want to, uh, that, means more to me but my nature is to be very frugal my nature is to try to be very smart you yeah. know with my money and before we got married i was very good with my money you know i starbucks yeah. you know five six seven dollars for a coffee is yeah. absolutely insane it doesn't make any sense at all in that i don't think it makes sense to anybody i think it's a laziness yep. thing they don't want to make the coffee, so they go and they, they do it. But is there value to that, to those, what we would consider wasting money? There must be value to them. Yeah. It, the experience must have some value, right, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't feel that way. You know, I, I feel differently, but the experience for the two girls, I totally feel. So it's almost like a split personality, yeah. I think. Let me just change the battery. Yes. I think we could wrap up. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on the podcast. It was yeah. amazing you. having you and uh, nice to meet you yeah. as well. I, I want to say like this is probably one of the funnest podcasts we've ever done because I'm trying to think back. Stradman was fun, but we were doing so much other stuff that day that by the time we filmed the podcast, we, we were like, exhausted. We had a we full were day. So tired. Uh, this, this is, I think our most, this is my favorite one. If, if I were to go back for any podcast, can you think of? I mean, I don't know if I want to pick out like based off the guest individually but just overall the overall podcast experience? experience this has been a great experience we came to vegas the drive over here was a breeze but you wouldn't say this is your favorite one i'm I, <laughs> well just because i don't want to put down other people i don't know I, <laughs> kevin's was great yes kevin's this has been i i will say this you is, want to say top three yes i will say top three top three i i want to say so far this has been my favorite experience because of how different it has been from every other episode and seeing all of this together, getting right. able to talk right. to you, we I would say... It's the best one. Okay? Yeah, he said it, he said it. Okay, it. This is the in, best. We Thank you. We got to jump in a foam pit. Yeah. Know, like, mm -hmm. Yeah. We met Steve Aoki. That's Steve Aoki. amazing. Yeah. Uh, and we got to see this just collection and, and talk to, I, I think, the, the, the best person when it comes to Pokemon. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank really, you very much. It really means a lot. And by the way, we, we all got uh, the illness tested. We don't want to say the, the C word. I got tested. They, they do that little thing up uh, up your nose. That was not, actually not my favorite part. No. no that, that was a scare. That, I've never had that done yeah. before either. Uh, Twan like has never had it done yeah. either. Uh, every time we always get the finger, finger, finger. Yeah. that's what we were and expecting. That, or like at CVS, they do the just yeah, yeah, right inside. No, yeah, that's what I, yeah. that, that, that thing was weird. Yeah. You know, having oh. that, I've never, none of us deep. had that. It was scary. Oh, yeah. I hated it, was, that. it was scary. I hated that. But, uh, uh, so we're all good. We're all negative, which is great. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much again. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, you know, I yeah. appreciate you guys so much, you know, oh, cool. doing this, the, the financial side of things, you know, just isn't brought up enough with yeah. collectibles and with, uh, especially with Pokemon information. I think a lot of people should go to your channel and check out your financial information and how it can apply yeah. to their collectibles because you have a lot of these young people that are sitting suddenly on tons of money because their PSA 10 Lugia that was worth 13,000 <sighs> eight months ago. Yeah. Today it's worth $130,000. Suddenly, these these kids got a hundred thousand dollars extra in their hand, mm -hmm. and they honestly aren't prepared to know what to do with that. Yeah. And so I, I think uh, I think you know you shedding some light on that, and even maybe in another video talking about you know when you suddenly come into you hit the lottery. This is kind of like hitting the lottery. It is, yeah. And and how should you react? You know what what's you know what what should you be concentrating on? It's too easy, like when ball players get that first million dollar check. It just goes out, you know, buy a car and just blow the money in that. You know, yeah. uh, this isn't how life is. You know, you got to you, you gotta be smart. And uh, too many people don't know what to, I'm old enough where I wouldn't go crazy like that. But most of these kids that suddenly are sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars that they didn't expect, they don't know what to do with it. And a lot of them are making mistakes because yeah. I hear a lot about this. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Well, if also, you had any call to action, any anything you wanted to mention yeah. right at the end, this is your time. That camera right there. Mm-hmm. Say what you want to that camera. Let's hear it. Whatever you want. Yes. My, uh, my main focus, my main focus these days is our charity foundation, which is the Aoki Foundation, where we have blended brain health and autism into one into uh into under one umbrella and steve and i work very hard on on this charity and it's actually what you know what means the world you know to me now we have a little beautiful autistic daughter we understand what you know what uh is available to these kids and what these kids need and this is a very very valuable thing that i feel my remaining years i want to devote you know to autism and to brain health and working with somebody like Steve Aoki has been a godsend because he had all the infrastructure in place. And, and so we're, you know, we have such a good thing going. We have events, Pokemon events, other types of events, some business things like what Graham is going to be involved with, you know, coming up in a number of months. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyway, it's, it's all about charity and it's all, it's all about, you know, you know, our brain health and autism, Aoki foundation.org slash Pokemon. We'll That's put a link in the description. Link down, the link down below in the description. Below. Yes. So yeah, anybody, anybody that every single donation means one therapy session for a young kid who will not get that therapy session without it. Thank you. Thank donate. You. <laughs> donate. So with smash that said, you guys, that, destroy it. Destroy smash that, that yeah. like button. button donate. Smash, smash that donate it. button. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, smash the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Feel free to add us on Instagram. All the links are down below in the description. You can also get four free stocks from Weeble. It's all down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, until next time. Until thank next you, guys. Time. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. We should do the mic drop. The Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. And also, anything you mention is perfectly fine, too. You know, anything you mentioned maybe about this house or COVID testing, anything you were to say is perfectly fine. I don't get the most service in here, but here we go. All right, I'll be super careful on the mics. Um... And I have this. Yeah. If you... yeah, perfect. So we'll we'll do that halfway through. <clears throat> the podcast is made uh, twenty five eight fourteen. So you're going to be introducing the podcast. What episode is this? Is it the thirty second? Yeah, I think it's thirty first, thirty second. Thirty second, I think. Yeah, because we got Jack Dory. So you're going to say, "Welcome to the 30, 30 second ever episode of the Iced Coffee Hour." Introduce yourself, and then say. The podcast has made so far twenty five thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Third, what was the first word need, again? <laughs> welcome to the. All you need to remember: thirty two, yeah. thirty second ever, then twenty five eight fourteen. Thirty two, ever. <clears throat> thirty I'm, second ever. Yeah. What is B roll? Oh, we're gonna get a close right up of this. Oh, I see. And then going to be recorded separately. So I'm going to put this here. Oh, and throw okay. It over on the top. So Jack, oh, I'm going to have okay. you stand right here and just record. Sure. All right. So just record this. Yes. That camera and uh, go. Is that the right side? The road side? Road facing you? Yes, yep. Go. Uh-huh. Perfect.